I want you to go back with me to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12 is what most theologians, when they look at the book of Revelation, recognize that Revelation chapter 12 is the central chapter to the whole book. Basically what Revelation chapter 12, it tells you what is going on because if you didn't have Revelation chapter 12, you wouldn't know what is going on. Just as when we were in the river and we didn't know what was going on with the stream dragging us away, Revelation chapter 12 tells us something that I think we need to be very clear on. Revelation chapter 12 starts off by telling us in verse 7 that there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. But they lost their place in heaven and they were cast down to the earth. And a third of the angels, I want you to listen to what I'm saying. I'm going to be emphasizing certain things. A third of the heavenly hosts that existed, a third of them fell with the devil. To planet earth now that to me is already incredible and just to give you an idea when you think as hebrews chapter 1 tells us angels were created only for one purpose they weren't created to procreate they weren't created to really worry about food or eating or about all the things that we worry about their sole purpose in their creation was to do the will of the Father. And they are basically available 24 hours, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. They are at our Heavenly Father's beck and call every moment. Now some of them and one of them is Lucifer. The morning star had the privilege of being what they call a covering cherub. Basically what that means is that it was a cherub found in the very presence of God. He, ha he had a choice position, an honored position. He stood in the fiery stones in the presence of the unseen. He was privy to be the first person that would hear or receive any information or any instruction was first of all given to him. So one of the abilities he had was the ability to be able to transfer information that he had received in such an eloquent way that everybody understood the roles that they had to play. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 tells me that unless a trumpet blows a clear, distinct sound, who will know when to get ready for war? Lucifer's choice of words was so carefully chosen that when he told you something, the instruction was very clear. There wasn't any shadow as to if there would be doubt regarding what you had to do. It was very clear. But because he was given this ability to be able to transfer, or, uh, transfer commands in a way that people could understand it, we also recognize that he could take those commands and he could make them ambiguous. And there was a time in his life when he questioned who this other angel was. 
This other angel's name was, according to Revelation, Michael. Michael actually means, when one looks at the name, one who is like God. That's what the word Michael means. Or it can also be given in a question form. Who is like God? And Lucifer, the morning star, the one that received first-hand information, started to question certain things. Because one day he heard the father say to his son, to whom of the angels have I ever referred to as my son? And who has ever, have I ever revealed to them as I am your father? Today I have begotten you. Lucifer heard this, was intrigued. He looked at this other angel, Michael. He looked at himself started to wonder what is the difference between the two of us he looks like an angel he serves god he does everything god the father wants i am an angel i also do what the father wants i do everything he wants but why is it that he is referred to as the begotten and so doubt arose in his mind and he went amongst the angels Talking with them, reasoning. You know, have you ever considered this? And with the choicest of words, he influenced the thinking of these angelic beings who, up to that moment, lived for God. They didn't consider themselves in any way. In actual fact, I'm counseled that it was their greatest pleasure to lift other created beings closer into the presence of God than they themselves could even venture. To them, the greatest desire of existence was the uplifting of everybody else. But for a moment, the devil planted a seed with the choices of words that he got them to start thinking about themselves. Why weren't we brought into the council? Why weren't we brought into the discussion? Why wasn't our opinion asked? We are intelligent beings. We can see what's going on. We know the things. And slowly, without anybody knowing, this torrent of river, torrent of water came out of his mouth and started to sweep away to the extent that he got a third of the angelic beings to agree with him. Now, I want you just to think about that for a moment. Remember that these angelic beings were created for one purpose, and that was to be in God's service. I can imagine it like this. You know, I once saw this, and I've shared this before with you, but I'm going to share it again. Where I saw this lady come down to the beach, and she had three, three what we will call border collies. You know what border collies are? They're not middle collies. They are border collies. Okay, they're on the border. <laughs> border collies are those collies that are so good at shepherding. You see them often used when they try and get sheep together. You've seen them. Really intelligent. Very, um, how can I say, concerned about the well-being when they taught of sheep. And this lady came down with three border collies and they stood next to her in a row one two three all they did was look intently at the lady's face the sun was out 
The beach was beautiful. Crabs were running around all over. Waves were crashing, but that did not interest them. All they looked at was her face. In her hand, she had one of those paddle things. And she put the ball into that. And all the dog's ears pricked. And they were waiting. They knew now it's about to happen. And then she would look down and ignore two of the dogs, but look at one in particular. And as she would look, she wouldn't even call a name, wouldn't say anything. She would then flick that ball. And that dog would shoot out. The other two remained seated. Would shoot out, run, collect the ball, run back, give it to her, and go and sit back in the queue, in the row. And for about half an hour, I watched her. She would then take the ball, and the dogs were watching, and she would put it, and she would look down, and whew, the other two dogs would remain seated, and the one that she looked at would fly. And I imagined in my mind's eye how that all these angelic beings that were created for this purpose, all they focused on was on the Father's face. And he would look down, and then look away and pew, that angel will go and do his bidding. They were created for that purpose. But something happened through the choice words. Something happened to their thinking. Now I read, and I want you to go back with me to Revelation chapter 12. That there was a moment in heaven when everybody rejoiced. It says in verse 12, Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. Why? But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. Rejoice heavens, but woe to planet earth. It's interesting that in Revelation chapter 8, we actually read of three woes. Woe, woe, woe. I'm counseled very clearly that those who will receive the seal of God will mourn at the woe that is taking place on planet Earth. And I want you to recognize that the angels look down on us and once this being that caused incredible chaos in heaven is now restricted to planet Earth, but that's where you and I are. And woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because the devil has gone down to you. Then I read how that for 1,260 years, he goes against the church of God with everything that he has, but he only manages to get those who were already committed to be more committed. That comes to an end. Then we read verse 15. Then from his mouth the serpent spewed water. Now I want you to listen to certain things that are happening now. From his mouth the serpent spewed water. Like a river. To overtake the woman and sweep her away with the torrent. Okay, what have I just read? Now, a lot of you will be looking at me and trying to, you know, Revelation, it's a symbolical book, and you will be giving me all this. Well, the woman, who's the woman? You know, that's the church, that's what we say. And then we will look at it and say, okay, then what's the water? Well, we will say, that's. People, maybe, 
The serpent, who's the serpent? Well, according to Revelation 12 verse 9, it says there, that great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan who leads the whole world astray. Oh, okay, so we know that the serpent here is the devil. And so we start looking at this and we're trying to figure out what is going on. But dear friends, one of the things I've learned about studying the book of Revelation, even though it is symbolical, almost 80% of the information that you find in the book of Revelation is written down somewhere else in the Word of God. It's found somewhere else. Now I want you to think for a moment because this is us, isn't it? We're trying to get some information of what's going on. Now I want you to notice it says the things I'm starting to look at. The first thing is that it's a serpent. Well, I'm looking for the key figures here or key characters. The first one is the serpent and the next one is what? The woman. Now a serpent you've concluded devil and woman you've concluded us. Okay. Symbolically that could be what it is. But I want you to also notice in the book of Revelation chapter 12, it talks about a woman standing on the sun, sorry, standing on the moon and clothed with the sun and wearing 12 stars on her head in a crown. But then it says about this woman, she was pregnant and was about to give birth. And then I, I see how that the devil tried to attack this child that was about to be born. Now I'm going to ask you the question, is that real or unreal? Am I talking symbolical language still here? And if you are Afrikaans, your answer will be more accurate than an English-speaking person. Because in Afrikaans you will get the word Yarnia. <laughs> you see, because it is symbolical and it is literal. But I don't start off with it, first of all, saying it's literal. I start off by saying it's symbolical, unless there is clear evidence that what I'm looking at could also be literal. You see, Jesus was born of a woman, and the devil went to make war with him. Very literal. But it's also true that the woman is the church. Very real too. So what is it now? What am I trying to say? Okay, let's go back. Verse 15. Then from his mouth. So let's try to get this clear first of all. When I approach it, I must push everything that's shouting in my head to make it literal. No, I mustn't make it literal. It's first of all symbolical. So the mouth. What is mouth if it's symbolical? Out of the utterance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So, mm, so what am I getting out of this? That your actions are revealed. You know, that it's quite interesting. They say that your actions are only thoughts that are going into action. You'll see what I'm doing here. So I'm looking mouth, okay, serpent. Mm. We've already concluded that's the devil spewed okay I like the word spewed you know the word spewed is found twice in the book of Revelation Revelation chapter 3 Laodicea you are not hot or cold therefore I'm about to spew that's the old King James version or spit you out of my mouth interesting we have the mouth here again and we have spew here again I'm starting to try and find out what in the world am I reading here. Then it goes on and says, like a river. Okay, like a river. Now in Revelation chapter 17, I find out that rivers and that are people. I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. This is all symbolical language, but it then goes on to say, like a river to overtake the woman. Mm, I know what it means to overtake you know, when you overtake a car. Or you overtake somebody who's going too slow. To overtake the woman. Woman, okay, we've church. And sweep her away. Sweep. How many of you do house cleaning? You sweep. 
So good to see that you do house cleaning, Tom. Do you sweep? Okay, what do you sweep away? You sweep away dirt. You'll see why I'm doing all of this. With a torrent. Torrent. Okay, I want to show you something. Shoot across to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. You know, dear friends, what I was so amazed at is that the M.O. of the devil has been revealed to us in Revelation 12. You know what the M.O. is? Modus operandi. Okay, that's just been clever. I call it M.O. Okay, the M.O. of the devil is what? Now let's look at this. Re um, Genesis chapter 3. Now, verse 1. Now, the what? What's it say there? The serpent. Wow. That ancient serpent called the devil. Who's the serpent here really? It's Satan, but Satan is actually using a literal serpent. Do you understand? He never comes openly towards you. He always takes on the disguise of or he uses other people. He will never personally come up against you. The only time he ever did that was with Christ. But even there he didn't come up as the one that was his enemy. He came as one who was his friend, wanted his well-being. You see, the devil never comes to you in the open. He's always in disguise. And I want you to notice what I'm saying. Now the serpent was more what? What does your Bible say? Cunning. Have any of you ever had a serpent for a, a pet? Are they cunning? Cunning. Are they, well, what does yours say? Crafty? Mine says crafty. What does it mean to be crafty? To be cunning. Okay, it's to be cunning. Let me use an example. When you go and you build something with your hands, it's called craft, isn't it? Crafty. You are quite crafty with your hands. Some people can draw a person that looks just like that person. They're very crafty. I might take a piece of paper and draw a person and it doesn't look like that person. I'm not crafty. You'll see what I'm doing. Here the devil is claiming to be something that he's not, but he's so good at what he's claiming to be that you can't tell that it's not him. Did you hear me? He's going to come to you in a craft and he's going to convince you so much that what you're looking at, you're going to think it's that object and not the person behind the object. You see, without a doubt, according to the information we have, the serpent was one of the most beautifully created beings or creatures in the garden. But the devil had taken occupation of that to the extent that the devil did not, sorry, that Eve did not see the devil. She saw the serpent. So this is real. So let's carry on. The serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. Dear friends, there is so much information here. This is a created being. But he was created with incredible abilities. Like I told you in the beginning, he had this ability to transfer information to in such a way that it was not ambiguous. People knew. People were persuaded. People were moved. When they got together before the fall, he would call the people into song. He had such an influence, such a power over people. You'll see why I'm doing all this. The serpent was more crafty than all the creatures the Lord God had made. But now we read the next thing. He said to who? Does it say the man? 
to the woman. Now I want you to think while I'm doing this, where do we find ourselves bouncing back to? Revelation chapter 12. The serpent opened his mouth and water spewed out of his mouth like a river to sweep the woman away by the torrent. Here we're actually reading the fall of mankind. The serpent came to the woman and he managed to actually get the woman to think differently about God than what she initially thought about him. To the extent that when you read verse 6, notice what was coming out of his mouth, what was the objective of the words coming out of his mouth, was to influence her, to change her thinking. He was, and de difference, you'll see why I'm bringing this all out, but never underestimate the power of words. Verse 6 says, when the woman saw, is that what yours says? I'm going to ask you something. What does it mean when the woman saw? That, that somehow did she finally walk into the light? Is it like, wow, I finally understand? Because it says, when the woman saw, so what? That what the devil had said was what she saw. She finally, it's like the devil said, aha, you finally see. You were in the dark up to now, but you finally see. When the woman saw, what did the woman see? It says that the fruit of the tree was good for food. Was that fruit of the tree good for food? Was it good for food? What did God say to them? You must not eat from this tree because the day you eat of this tree you shall surely die. I'm going to ask you something dear friends. Good food or bad food? According to God, good food or bad food? Bad food. Bad food. But he managed to get her to think that that food that God had forbidden was actually good for her to eat. Not only that, it goes on further. And pleasing to the eye. The word pleasing gets me here. You're not uncomfortable about doing it. You don't feel a little um, bad about doing it. In actual fact, it fits you like a glove. You were actually designed to eat this fruit. Pleasing. Then it goes further. And also desirable for gaining wisdom. Three things. Three things that he managed to persuade her to believe. Three things. God said, thou shalt not. He said, did God really say that you will die? He managed to persuade her. And dear friends, I want you to listen. Revelation chapter 12 says that he swept the woman away with a torrent of words that was coming out of his mouth. <coughs> he swept her away away. Now you quite correctly if you look at Revelation chapter 12 without a doubt the woman is the church. The woman in Revelation chapter 17 is the fallen church. The fallen people of God. The apostate. The woman is always recognized as God's people. The apostate women are the women who have chosen to be in rebellion against God. Here we see for the first time that this woman which was pure, nothing wrong, through the persuasive words of the devil, he successfully got the woman to do what she was not designed to do. To actually think that she was doing herself a big favor. 
that she'd actually become wise to life. You see, what I want to remind you, in Revelation chapter 12, now I'm closing off, I want you to think with me. In Matthew chapter 16, Christ is talking about two groups of people, Pharisees and Sadducees. Matthew chapter 16. And one day he turns around to the disciples and he says, Be careful of the leaven, old King James, or be careful of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now, the, the disciples get into this big conversation that they say that God, is, I mean, Jesus is now unhappy because we forgot to bring bread along and all of that stuff, and they're busy talking, and finally Jesus turns around and says, how is it that you can't understand what I said? I did not talk about the yeast of bread. I asked you to be careful of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And then the Bible tells me that they finally twigged on what he was talking about. And what was he talking about according to Matthew 16? He was talking about the teachings of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now I want to just share something with you. And the reason why I brought this all out is I want you to be careful of teachers I want you to be aware that the Word of God has taught me that there will be false teachers, that there will be false prophets, false messiahs. But I'm interested in the teaching one. Now, we are not Catholic, are we? Because, you see, the church claims to be, according to Catholicism, they are the teacher. And what they say is what should be done. Isn't that true? Now, do you know that we actually inherited something as Protestants from the Catholics. You know what it is? It's this platform. This was not part of the original church. But why do we still have it? Because from here I tell you what to do. You know, it's so interesting that in the early form of, of church, when a person would stand up in front, he could even speak a foreign language, and then one person would say, Amen, and everybody would say, Amen. You know what it means to say, Amen? What does it mean to say, Amen? It means we agree with what you've said. You see, what I want you to understand, dear friends, are you listening to everything that's coming from here and taking it to heart? Have you tested me to find out if I'm a good teacher? You see, the devil used words to persuade a third of the angelic beings. The devil managed to persuade the woman. And I'm counseled that the devil is going to persuade the church. How is he going to get that right? Only through, the only through the process of communication. And it's sad, dear friends. Do you know that some of the teachings that is against God's word was actually preached from the pulpit? For example, the immortality of the soul, that you will never die, was propagated from the pulpit. And everybody in the church said... Amen. I just want to warn you, according to Revelation chapter 12, that your greatest awareness must be what are you listening to? Who are your teachers? In actual fact, Christ said, you shall call no one rabbi except Christ. One of the biggest problems with the Corinthian church in the beginning was some of them believed that Peter was the mouthpiece. Others believed that Barnabas was the mouthpiece. Still others believed that Paul was the mouthpiece. But none of them realized that the word of God is the mouthpiece. 
So today what I wanted to do was to warn you that there are torrents at the moment available on YouTube, on Facebook, on Zoom, on the social media platforms, where everybody has a platform to speak from. They are so cunning in what they are doing, they are so crafty in what they're doing, that they're even getting men and women to question their gender. Are you questioning your gender? They are so crafty, dear friends, that they're even getting you to call Earth Mother Earth because that's where you were conceived. Are you intelligent? Because the woman thought that what she had gained was wisdom. But that wisdom was foolish in God's eyes. Your greatest need is going to be this. Your greatest need in your life at this present moment is to have the Holy Spirit there who will guide you and instruct you in truth. If there was ever a time that we needed the Holy Spirit's influence and presence, it is now. Because man, there is this torrent of water spewing out of the dragon's mouth. And the word tells me that he's going to lead the whole world astray. And they are going to wander, not wander, you know, W-A-N-D-E-R, they are going to wander, W-O-N-D-E-R, which means they're going to marvel. they are going to marvel at the beast. Last verse. Revelation chapter 12 verse 16. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Did you hear that? What came to the rescue of the woman? The earth. We'll talk about that next time. I want you to think, dear friends, what are you listening to? There are people in the world called influencers. Is that what they're called? Influencers. We once, or the wife I should say more than myself, watched a series that was put together where this lady would sit with a toilet seat. She would hold the toilet seat like this and they would take the shot in such a way that it looked like she was in a plane looking out of a window. Really? She would be sitting in, you know, these little swimming pools, you know, these blow up swimming pools with a pina colada, I don't even know what pina coladas are, <laughs> with a pina colada in her hand, hat on, and she was saying, whoa, I'm here in the Maldives. They would take it in such a way that that's what you saw. And they're called influencers. And these people have tremendous influence at this moment on people. And they are actually there for the purpose of being used to influence people. One more thing. My wife is the one that informs you of this, and I'm grateful. Have you heard of bots? You know, sometimes you'll get this thing when you're busy, do, and it'll ask you the question, are you a robot? Have you ever seen that? And you kind of, what a stupid question. But why are they asking that question? Because do you know that they've actually got the computer running programs or algorithms in such a way that they take on human um, kind of form 
And you think you're speaking to a human, meantime you're speaking to a AI. You're speaking to a robot. How many times have you people phoned somebody and you hear, hello, I'm so interested in your call, please wait for a moment, would you like to select, and you actually listen to, yes please, can I? And the day just carry on, and what do you realize you're doing? You're speaking to a bot. You're not speaking to a human. You see, I want to remind you, dear friends, that the world, that torrents are being spewed out of the devil's mouth. And you need to test to see if this spirit is from God. May God help us. Thank you.